Hello everyone and welcome to my fireside and Merry Christmas as well. Sadly, we live in a world where traditions and customs are being forgotten and lost all the time. But this time of year, it remains a period where tradition still goes strong. Most people and most families will have traditions that they hold on to and maintain and keep going year after year. Some of these traditions are found across the world and date back centuries and others are unique to people's families. Some of these traditions might include putting up the Christmas tree together, which is fairly common across the world, and others might be sitting together as a family and watching a particular Christmas film. If you or your family have any interesting or unique Christmas traditions that you do together, please do let us know in the comments below. I'd find that quite interesting to, to have a read through. Now, there's one Christmas tradition that, sadly, is not practiced very much anymore. In fact, it's largely forgotten entirely. But it was once one of the most popular Christmas traditions across all of England. And this was the telling of the Christmas Eve ghost story. While exploring this tradition, we're going to go back in time to an age when there were no TVs or radios, or bright flashing lights everywhere you go. A time when people had to make their own forms of entertainment. I want you to imagine yourself at the end of the 19th century. It's a dark, cold night. You and your family rely on your single fire and a few candles for heat and light. Your grandfather takes a seat by the fire and you and your brothers and sisters gather around as he's about to tell you a story. A story that his grandfather told him about an old castle from ages past and the white lady that haunts it. The telling of ghost stories reached its golden age in the Victorian period. This was a time when people were becoming more literate and the abolition of the stamp tax ensured that it was cheaper to produce publications and so naturally sales went up as a result of that. And authors worked quite hard to make sure that spooky publications and works and stories were out in time for the festive period. It's Charles Dickens that we have to thank for the surge in people reading and telling ghost stories in Britain at this time. Dickens wrote many Christmas novellas which often included ghosts, as well as editing and including ghost stories that were already known in magazines that he was working with. Of course, as you probably already know, the most famous Christmas ghost story that is still enjoyed by millions around the world today, albeit mostly in film version, is Charles Dickens' 1843 story, A Christmas Carol. And this was so popular that within six months after its release, it was already in its seventh edition. Sadly, at this time, Britain was becoming a very urbanised society and, as a consequence, many rural traditions were being lost. But Dickens was able to revive the telling of ghost stories at Christmas time to a huge increasing audience that demanded more. People today are so desensitised to horror from years of consuming media that can conjure up easily any type of monster or creature with CGI. So it's much harder for people today, especially children, to give their attention to a story, written text, especially when there's no imagery to see. But the Victorians had to rely on their imaginations, as did everyone that came before them. By the 1890s, the telling of ghost stories at Christmas seemed to almost be a backbone of English identity. Jerome K. Jerome said, Wherever five or six English-speaking people meet round a fire on Christmas Eve, they start telling each other ghost stories. Nothing satisfies us on Christmas Eve but to hear each other tell authentic anecdotes about spectres. It is a genial, festive season, and we love to muse upon graves and dead bodies and murders and blood. What was different about the Victorian ghost stories, however, was the way in which they were able to relate more to the ordinary man and woman in the street. If we look at many of the Gothic narratives of the 18th century, we see them set in grand castles and palaces, with the characters being aristocrats, and while this does continue in the 19th century, we see ghosts on a smaller scale, with the settings being in houses and more relatable domestic locations. 
with the middle and working class having more representation. The ghosts are no longer symbols of human emotional states, but instead are here to deal with unfinished business or enact some kind of change among the living. And this is best evidenced in The Christmas Carol, I think, with the ghosts appearing to Scrooge to try and get him to change his ways. Dickens used the ghosts in his story to address the social ills of the time brought about through urbanism and industrialism, and these include extreme poverty and terrible working conditions and the isolation of the vulnerable, specifically children. Now I've seen some argue, and I tend to agree with this, that these ghosts represent a defence of traditional values in the face of rapid modernisation brought on by Britain's industrialism. Not just in terms of charity and redemption and forgiveness, but also as an appreciation of the past, the home and the importance of family and community, a yearning for a happier, simpler and more rural time. That's how I see it. But it wasn't actually the Victorians that invented the tradition of telling ghost stories on Christmas. Yes, the Victorians helped to widely popularise it, but there's a lot of evidence showing that this tradition goes back a lot further. English folklorist Henry Bourne wrote in 1725 that nothing is commoner in country places than for a whole family in a winter's evening to sit round the fire and tell stories of apparitions and ghosts. If this was the most common countryside practice during wintertime, then perhaps it's safe to assume that it was fairly well entrenched in the culture. It's worth pointing out, though, that Bourne dismisses this tradition as fearful and stemming from the weak brains of men. As a city dweller, he has a less than favourable view on the traditions and customs that he wrote about. He says, As to the opinions they hold, they are almost all superstitious, being the produce of heathenism. They are really sinful, notwithstanding an outward appearance, they seem harmless. And being a scandal to religion and an encouraging of wickedness, therefore to aim at abolishing them will, I hope, be of no crime. But let's go back even further, from the 1700s to the 1600s. 1623, we find in Shakespeare's A Winter's Tale, Shakespeare mentions stories of spirits and goblins being told during the winter. So again, more evidence of people telling spooky ghost stories at this time of year. But let's go back even further. In Christopher Marlowe's work, The Tragedy of the Rich Jew of Malta from 1589, the protagonist remembers having heard winter tales of spirits and ghosts that glide by night. Already you can see that there's evidence of this tradition stretching back centuries, and in reality it stretches back centuries earlier than these mentions in English literature. This time of year, the Yule season, the darkest and coldest period, has always been a time of ghosts, a time of the dead. It's always been a time of reflection, a time of remembrance for our departed kin. It's no coincidence that so many ghost stories and ghost sightings take place at this time of year within folklore, not just in Britain, but across Europe too. Most significantly here, perhaps, is the fact that the wild hunt was often seen at Christmas time. Now this is a topic that deserves a video of its own, and better people than me have covered this topic before. But in short, the Wild Hunt is the event where a god or hero, usually warden, but this depends on the location and tradition, leads a ghostly spectral hunt across the sky. In some parts of Britain, it's actually King Arthur that leads the Wild Hunt. And again, this takes place just before Christmas. So, for example, in one local tradition, Arthur leads a procession of his knights through the sky above Somerset each Christmas Eve, starting from Cadbury Castle. Ghosts and Christmas are linked, and they always have been. Ghost stories have always been told during the Yule season, and ghosts and the dead have always played a key role in this celebration. Dickens did some really good work when he continued this tradition with A Christmas Carol, and millions of people continue to uphold this tradition of Christmas ghost stories when they watch it in film version at this time of the year. The BBC 
is likewise upheld in this tradition when they show a ghost story for Christmas. The film A Nightmare Before Christmas is another good example of this ghostly Yule connection continuing in the culture. The Polar Express film includes a ghost too that I think was really well done. Many believe that he's a spectre that portrays what the hero boy will become if he doesn't change his ways, while others think of him just as an unknown spirit that rides with the mysterious Christmas locomotive. Whatever he is, he's another good example of a Christmas ghost and the connection between this season and the supernatural. One other thing. Do you believe in ghosts? Interesting. As a final example of a really good Christmas ghost story, I'd recommend Tom Rousel's book, The Spirit of Yule, where a Victorian gentleman on Christmas Eve leaves church and goes into the woods on his walk home, and he encounters the spirits of our Anglo-Saxon forebears. So we found out that the tradition of ghosts at Christmas is indeed an ancient one, and in many ways still persists in the culture through media, but I'd like to use my platform here to call for the revival of oral tellings of ghost stories at Christmas. For one brief period, once a year, turn off the devices and gather around as a family or with friends and tell some ghost stories by the fire or by candlelight. Let's get this tradition going again. I actually think it's quite humbling to imagine the countless generations of our ancestors over the centuries who at this time of year told ghost stories to each other around the fire. And it's quite tragic in my mind that this tradition, this custom, is pretty much dying out on our watch. And to me, in my mind, I think that we can't let that flame be extinguished. We have to keep this tradition going. Because after all, tradition is not the worship of ashes, it is the preservation of the fire. And on that note, I'm going to put another log in here to keep it going. Because it's going to be a long night and a cold one. But I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and I'll see you all again in the new year with some more adventures. Until then.